Hello again. Here's a couple of examples of how we can animate a simple extrude. Lightwave Digital are working on some procedural geometry nodes, so I'm kind of hoping we can file this technique under obsolete in the near future, but I still think it's worth documenting. Here we are in Illustrator. Here's the artwork. Nothing special, just some simple outlines, all as separated pieces. I'm going to take this and save as. I've done it already, as you can see, and I saved it as the oldest Illustrator version there is. So here we go, version three. Would be nice if there's a new importer on the way so we could import any old Illustrator file. But in the meantime, save as version three, off you go. In Modeler, let's go over to the In Out tab. Click on EPS Loader, even though we saved as an Illustrator file. Now we just need polys here, so under the Convert to, I'm just gonna select Closed Polys and everything else I'm just gonna leave at default except for the path, which is just magically popped up here and let's okay that. I'm gonna keep things really simple here. So Shift E will bring up the Extrude tool. And I'm just gonna push that back. That's good, but I need these holes here. So I'm gonna select those. So those and that. Square brackets to make sure I've got everything. And then I'm just gonna scale it with my finger on the Control key. I'm gonna scale it out like this. We'll leave this selected and under the Construct tab, we will go to Speed Boolean Subtract. And that should take away the holes, which it has done. Now it's a good practice I find, after you've done that, space key to drop the tool, press M to merge points, and you'll find there's a few left over. Also, just to be safe, it's a good idea just to unify polys. But it looks like we're all good in this case. We'll create a weight map next. So let's select all these backend polys here, which are those ones. We'll hit the plus icon here, Let's just call it back. And with them still selected, I'm gonna press T for translate. Keep my finger on the control key and I'm just gonna push those in so there's not much depth to it at all. Also while I'm here, I'm gonna use shift square bracket. I'm gonna create a surface called extrude. Shift quote will invert that selection. So it's just the faces that are selected. I could just use the default surface, but I'm gonna create one called face. These colors will change in case I decide to do it off camera. Now the final step is I'm gonna move all this forward uh, to the origin, so it's like that. And if you struggle a little bit, what you could also do is press F3. And I want it on the Z, untick the X and the Y, and I want it minus, okay that. And now these backend polys should be at zero coordinates on the Z. One final, final thing to do is I'm going to end up with a little bit of shredding on this. So I'm going to avoid that by selecting all of the A character here. And again, with my finger on shift key, I'm just going to nudge it back a little bit. You don't have to do that. It just depends on your artwork. That's the model in sorted. Let's go to layout. In layout, I've already brought the model in, as you can see, and uh, changed the colors. <laughs> First example is going to be super simple. So I'm gonna select the relax object as I've called it, press pre for properties. And just to be clear what's going on, I'm gonna delete all the modifiers except for the bones. So remove those. Okay, so over in the setup tab, I'm gonna add a bone just off screen here. Let's just call it back just to be clear. There it is at the origin Now it's not doing much. So we'll put it back in the origin and we'll press R to rest. Now when we move it, the whole letter moves with it. So with that bone selected, let's press P for properties. Go over to the bone weight map and we will select that back weight map that we made earlier. We don't want this to be affected by any fall offs created by layout internally. We just want to use the weight map only function. So we'll click on that. Now when we move that bone, we have a nice extrude. And we also have control over scale and rotation should we need it. And obviously we can still rotate or reposition the main logo. Also, we can play with the pivot point here. So if we reset that bone, let's reset that object as well. Let's go to back view. We can move this, let's say we want it at the top right corner here. Let's just move it to the top right. Ignore the, what it's doing at the moment. Press R to re-rest. And that's effectively our pivot point. So we could scale it from that point there. Or 
all nice and animatable. So that's the first example. Like I say, really simple. Now you might want to use nulls instead of bones to do the extrude. So I've reset the scene and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. We'll create a new null and we'll call this extrude. I'm gonna show you a quick example for all you DBNW patrons out there. So if we go to the add modifier, we can quickly go to DBNW transform. Reference item, we will select that extrude object. For weight map, we'll select that back. And we'll also click on world coordinates. Now, if we click on the extrude object, that essentially has done exactly the same thing. So that's a little added bonus for you. But also using the native nodes is quite simple. So I'll show you that as well. So extrude, let's reset that. So we can go to reset all which I also have mapped to my drop down here. Select the relax object and let's delete the DB and W modifier and we'll add a nodal displacement. We're going to use the native displacements. So the first thing I like to do is just to remove an extra layer of calculation under mode is to set it to set. Then I'm going to grab the transform node, plug that straight into the input here. And then I'm going to look for an item info. I'm going to point this item info node to the extrude null there. So that's pretty straightforward. All I need from here is the position into the translate, the rotation into rotation and scale into the stretch. And I'm not going to touch anything else. I'm just going to close that down, select the extrude object. Oh, there's one thing I've forgotten. Let's go back to the relax object. Let's get a weight map and select the back weight, I'm gonna filter that. I'm gonna plug that into that one there. Select the extrude object, and that should now do exactly the same. Since we're using a null now to do the extrude, it frees us up to use the bones to do other things. Obviously you could continue using nodal displacements, but I'm gonna rig something with bones. Let's turn off the nodal displacement for a second and we'll go to back view. Let's we'll make sure our relax object is selected and we're gonna add a bone. So equal sign on the keyboard. And we want a bone for each of these letters. And I'm gonna control D to du quick duplicate that. I'm gonna move them into position. I want the letters to rotate around. So we'll select all of those and we'll press R to rest them. Now they're not actually gonna do anything at that point because if you remember, we deleted the modifier. So we're gonna to have to re-add that. That's easy enough. Let's open that up. So there we are, but the trouble with this is they've got fall offs, which we don't want. Makes a terrible old mess. We need each of these bones to control each of these letters. So that involves a little bit of manual setting up and we're gonna use weight maps. We could either go back to modeler, select each letter and name it this way. Or a much better option if you have third powers paint weights tool, which is absolutely brilliant. Select the object, select paint weights. You can flick through what we've just created here. Or we could create a new one, press L, fill, A, fill, X, fill. Easy as that. Cool, so we have weight maps for each of these letters. So all I'm gonna do now is select the bone and apply the correct weight map per letter. Remembering, of course, to use weight maps only. Okay, so now that's set up, we have control over each letter. So now we can animate each letter like this. But if we turn on our nodal displacement with our extrude, that extrude is happening before the rotation so we have control over both the nice thing about having a rest position for the bones is that we can start off in a jumbled manner and then we can just go further down the timeline and reset all and we'll jump back to where they're supposed to be so that's it, we're done for this one. Really looking forward to seeing what Lightwave Digital come up with for the next releases.